Hey there everyone, I'm back with what I believe will be my final episode of this mini-series where I talk about Final Fantasy VII Remake before it comes out, and as you can see, we are less than a day away to the game. According to this countdown, we are 20 hours and 54 minutes, uh, but for me, it's going to be 17 hours, so yeah. Or basically for everyone, it's going to be 17 hours, because, you know. But, I just, I cannot believe we are almost there, and we just have a mere few hours to go until this comes out, and we're all playing it, and whatnot. So, I'm super excited. Of course, that's an understatement. But yeah, I don't really have anything to report, because, you know... They're not dropping any new stuff anymore because, duh, it's about to be released soon. They've just been counting down the past couple, the past few days or so. Square has just basically been counting down with basically like videos with the number on it saying something days, you know. And their latest one says tomorrow, which, duh, it's going to be out tomorrow. So. That's basically it, and in my last episode I talked about the Inside Final Fantasy VII Remake Episode 4. There is no Episode 5 as I'm aware of. I don't think they're going to be releasing another one before the game. I don't know if they're continuing that, but I basically talked about that in the last episode. I want to keep this one fresh and new. So I have nothing to really report on news or anything like that. I did see that more sources were giving Final Fantasy VII Remake great scores. Like, really great scores. So, that keeps me optimistic about it, and I'm really excited. So, I mean, more excited, of course, hearing that it's getting such good reviews, and that everyone is really enjoying it, except for those who either have sped run through it, or who just want to ruin the fun for everybody. So, but I try to ignore those people because I'm here for the positivity of this game and you know, those that I know who have played it in other countries really really enjoyed it. They gave it only positive outlooks. So, that keeps me optimistic and positive about it. For me personally, while waiting for this to come out tomorrow. I went back to play Before Crisis earlier since if some of you don't know, somebody took the game Before Crisis, which is a mobile only game, and they basically translated it and made it available to play on your desktop or laptop. So I've been playing that. I went back to playing it. I kind of took a long break from it, sort of. I don't know, I never went back to it, but finally, you know, since the remake's coming out, I thought I'd go back and play that, and I enjoy it so far. I mean, it's it's an okay game for a mobile game, an old mobile game, might I add, because this was back when flip phones were a thing, so it's not the best quality or anything, but it's fun, and I like it so far. I mean, it's about the Turks, and they're my favorite characters, so I can't complain, Will this game be remade eventually? I mean, I would like to see it remade. You know, even if they kept it a mobile game, but updated it for current mobile phones, that would be great. Because it would look so much better, I assume. Because, you know, it'd be updated for current devices and stuff. Mobile devices, which I think would be great. And I would love to, you know, play it in that format. But it's still playable now. And it's you know, it's really fun. I don't have the link for it right now, but I'm sure you could find it if you just look up Before Crisis. You know, I'm sure you'll find it somewhere if you just look it up. If I do find the link, I can update the description of this video and add it for you guys so you can go download it and play it. It is really fun. It's about the Turks, so if you love the Turks as much as I do, I recommend you play it. So, yeah, and I would love to see these Turks, you know, in the story again, and in the, comp in the compilation, and everything. 
the ones, I mean, the ones that are only in this game and not in the original Final Fantasy VII. But yeah. So, uh, I don't know what else to really talk about, except, like, I guess personal Final Fantasy VII related stuff, because, like I said, no news or anything has dropped in this last day up till the game, because they already dropped all their biggest stuff, the final trailer, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, I don't really have much for myself to report, except that I... I'm almost finished with one of my other Reno cosplays. It's a version of him from, I think it was from Brigade, which I saw recently ended, and I'm sad because I remember wanting to play that, but I couldn't figure out how, but it's okay. He had this like one alternate outfit in Airborne Brigade that was like a Yukata type outfit, and as soon as I saw that, I was like, I want to make that. Because it looks like a really cool outfit, and I don't see it cosplayed, like, at all. So I thought I could be unique and cosplay that. I don't know. I like to take on projects that I don't see a lot of, or, like, that I don't see done. Just, you know, to take on a unique project or something, cosplay-wise. And I just, I wanted to take something that was challenging, and, you know, something that I could learn from. And it was a lot of fun to make, and I just, you know, had tons of fun making it. I can probably attach a photo of it at the end of this video, so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Since I made it like a comparison photo of that, the cosplay and the picture of him in it. So I can just attach that at the end of this video, but yeah, I tested it out earlier today to see how it looked, and... I really love how it's turning out so far. The sad thing is, I can't wear it to a convention anytime soon, because I doubt there's going to be a convention anytime soon. I mean, my upcoming convention hasn't canceled yet, but I have a feeling they're going to have to. And the one I want to go to that's later in the year, like in the summer, I don't know if they're going to have to cancel or not. But, if anything, I do have a convention in September that I highly doubt will have to cancel. I'm keeping optimistic about that one. So, yeah. But, I'm not gonna go off topic here with all that stuff. But, yeah, I mean, it was a lot of fun to make, and I did hand sew the whole thing, and I'm proud of it and everything. So, yeah. Uh, my journey with Final Fantasy VII Remake and everything was a very interesting one to me, I mean. I mean, I know it might not be interesting to, like, a lot of other people who want to hear this or not, or who are listening, and this might bore some of you, but I remember, I remember hearing about the remake back in 2015 when they officially revealed that they were doing this and whatnot, and I was like, wow, Final Fantasy VII's getting remade, okay. I wasn't really much of a fan of 7 back then, I will admit. As you probably remember me talking about in one of my previous videos, when I talked about my journey with Final Fantasy 7, and how I used to not be a big fan of it, because I thought it was overrated, I guess, back then. And I thought, why do so many people like 7? What is it about 7 that stands out? I just, I don't know. I judged a book by its cover, I guess, because I didn't play a lot of 7 back then, because it wasn't on Steam yet, as far as I know. But anyways, I already talked about all this, so let's fast forward. So if you want to go hear me talk about my journey with Final Fantasy 7, you can go check that video out. I can attach it at the end, if I make an end screen for this video. Uh, I should probably do that. But anyways, okay, enough about that. Let me just get back on topic here. So, I was like, okay, cool, they're making remaking Final Fantasy VII Remake. I wonder when that's going to come out. I didn't think much of it back then for obvious reasons. But then once I started to really get back into Final Fantasy VII, and once I became a huge fan of it, and when it became my favorite Final Fantasy... I started to get really excited for this remake, and I was like, 
okay, so when are we getting it? Like, when are we going to start hearing more stuff about it? Because they announced this, what, a few years ago? So I thought, okay, when are we going to get this game? Months went by, we heard nothing. Square revealed they were working on Kingdom Hearts 3, and I thought, oh, okay, so they're working on that. So obviously, we're not going to hear about Final Fantasy VII Remake for a while then, right? Because they're too busy with Kingdom Hearts 3. That was their main focus at the time. So obviously, they're going to work on getting that game out. And so I thought, okay, so after Kingdom Hearts 3, they're gonna talk, they're gonna give us Final Fantasy 7 Remake, right? That, that's what I thought, you know? And I'm sure a lot of other people thought that too, because they're like, oh, they're focusing on Kingdom Hearts 3, they're not gonna give us Final Fantasy 7 Remake till after. And I'm like, okay, I'll be patient. I'll wait till after Kingdom Hearts 3 comes out, and then start to get excited again. So Kingdom Hearts 3 came out, and a few months went by, and we were coming up to E3, and a state of play from PlayStation and whatnot. And, you know, everyone was like, oh, they're totally going to talk about Final Fantasy VII Remake. I heard they're going to release a trailer for it. And I was like, whoa, what? And a lot of people started to, like, really be optimistic about it. And they were like, oh, we're going to get a new trailer. We're going to get a trailer for this game finally. And, you know, everyone was getting really excited. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is finally happening. So that happened, and, beho and believe it or not, we did get a trailer for Final Fantasy VII Remake. And then E3 happened, and we got an extended trailer. Wait, did we get? Do we ever get anything before that? I can't remember if we got anything before that state of play for Final Fantasy VII Remake. Oh wait, they said it was in development after Kingdom Hearts 3, which meant it was coming and we were getting it. So, we start, so fans started to get excited, myself included, like, oh my god, Final Fantasy 7 Remake is in development, they're actually working on it. And then we got the state of play, we got that trailer, and then people started to really get excited. Then E3 happened, and we saw a lot of stuff, and they said that this game was coming out March 3rd. And everyone just was blown away from that. And they were all super excited. So, yeah, after that, people were starting to, like, get really hyped up for this game and get really excited because, you know, it's finally happening, right? Final Fantasy VII Remake is finally, finally happening. And, you know, we're finally getting that game we all wanted for years. So, yeah, and of course they, you know, released pre-orders for different versions of the game. First Class, Deluxe Editions, Standard Editions, etc., etc. And of course, you know, people just were like, take my money, Square Enix, take my money. And, you know, I was like, am I going to get a PS4 for this game? I, I wasn't sure at the time. I thought, I don't know. Back then I wanted to, but it's like... I was just trying to debate if I should or not. I mean, yeah, I was really excited for this game, but like... You know, at the time I didn't really think much of it, but that's... I'm not gonna just get... I'm not gonna get into that right now, just my excitement for the game. So yeah, E3 happened, we all got excited, and... You know, everyone was planning to get the remake, and everyone was talking about it. And, you know, everyone was just over the moon that this was finally happening. And, yeah, so, more stuff came out. You know, we got more news. Square Enix announced the voice cast for the English version. For, some, for you know, the characters we saw it in the E3 trailer. And, you know, some people were like, oh, new voices. And they're like, well, they sound great. And everything and some people were like well we don't like this very much because we wanted the older voice actors you know from Advent Children and the compilation to come back which is what everyone thought everyone thought that the old voice actors were gonna return for this project because in 2015 when they showed a trailer you could hear Steve and I don't remember how to pronounce the guy that did Barrett's voice but you can hear both their voices in the older trailer from 2015 or so. 
And so you thought, okay, they're going to return to do the voices, right? That's what everyone thought. But then when we saw those, the uh, E3 trailer and State of Play, they're like, they sound a bit different, you know? And then the guy that used to do Barrett, he tweeted saying that was not his voice as Barrett. It was someone completely new. And then, you know, they officially announced the new cast. And personally, I was... Like, I, I appreciated and respected the new cast, and I thought they sound amazing. I still do. But I was heartbroken that they didn't get the older voice actors to return because I love and cherish them as well. And I loved how they, you know, did the voices of these characters. And I thought, I thought that the characters would sound different and just, I thought it would take time getting used to, which I got used to quickly. And it's just... I love these voice actors. I've met a few of them, of the older cast, and they're just really nice, and I was thankful to have the pleasure to meet some of them. But, like, the thing is, you know, I wanted them to return for this, but it was whatever. And I noticed some people, like, really wanted to push Square to have a DLC voice track of the Legacy cast. And at first, I was kind of on board with that. You know, I thought, what's the harm? What's the harm with this? You know, there, there's no harm in just, you know, I didn't think much of it back then. Of course now, I think it's a stupid idea and that that there's no way Square's going to do this, obviously. I mean, who knows if they will down the line or not? I, I just kind of doubt that they will. And I should have realized how pointless it was back then and should have said, hey, this is a bad idea. You know, and I know I notice now some of those people disrespected the new cast, and that is not okay with me. Like, do not disrespect the new cast. They're doing their best to bring these characters to life for us, and I think they're doing a phenomenal job, and I adore them all so much, and they sound great from what I've heard so far, and I'm sure I will love them in the game when I play it. And I just, I'm mad at the people who pushed so hard for the old cast to come back and have disrespected the new cast, and that's just not okay with me. So, I'm against them now, the people who did that. And the new cast has all my support right now. The old cast also has my support. I can love and support both casts, and I do. And I cannot wait to hopefully someday meet some of the new cast. I would I would love to see them at conventions and stuff. I would be super happy for that. So, anyways. So then, you know, fat, we fast forward to a few months later for Tokyo Game Show. And Square Enix, or Final, Square Enix on the Final Fantasy VII Remake website was counting down to a new trailer. And I saw rumors that it was going to feature, feature the Turks in it, and that's when I got extremely excited because I had been waiting to see the Turks because they were the characters I wanted to see the most out of everyone for obvious reasons. And I was like, I was super excited but also kind of nervous they would ruin them, but I thought, they're not going to ruin the Turks. They can't do that. I'm sure they're going to look even better than they did. And I was right. When I saw that trailer, I lost my mind because they blew me away with how amazing they looked in that trailer, and especially Reno, he looked perfect, absolutely perfect to me, and I just, I had so many feelings, if I'm going to be honest, and they were all positive, good feelings, and I just, I love what they did with their suits and everything, they're not baggy and weird looking like they used to be. I don't know what they were thinking back then when they gave them, like, oversized suits. I'm like, those don't even fit them. I mean, at Advent Children, they look okay, but they still look kind of... When I look back at Advent Children and the remake, their suits just looked... I mean, they looked goofy back then, if I'm gonna give it a right word. Now they're, like, more sleek, they're more form-fitting, and they look spot-on. Like, these suits are just beautiful. Just absolutely perfection. And 
I'm so thankful that they did that with the Turks because they look more badass now and I just I love what they did. It's such a huge improvement if I do say so myself. And then you know of course with the new reveals also came new voices but Square never announced the cast for those characters and a lot of people thought Mark Hamill was voicing Don Corneo. And I, I forget what source it was, but someone had the nerve to even write an article about it to confuse people. You know, they thought that just because an article wrote about it, that means, oh, it's confirmed, he's doing his voice. And no, it's not confirmed. Which is what I was mad about, and I talked about this in a previous episode. So I'm not going to get into detail about that, but... Yeah, people speculated too much. And I also speculated about Reno, but whatever. So anyways, after that, we really didn't get a whole lot. Like, I mean, we saw like some little short clips on Twitter and Facebook and stuff. And we got some character renders and all that stuff. But we didn't really get a whole lot for a few more months. And we thought we, thought we were going to get another trailer at, was it Jump Festa? Yeah, Jump Festa. We got nothing, and we were so disappointed, including myself. I remember, like, getting excited and then watching Square Enix's stream of their hour or whatever at Jump Festa, and, like, I was like, wait, they're not talking about Final Fantasy VII Remake. What is this? I was, like, so disappointed. Everyone on Twitter was blowing up about how upset they were. But we did get a trailer at the Game Awards, which made up for everything. And I think then later, like a couple months later, we got the theme song trailer. And then that blew everyone's mind away because Cloud and the Dress, we finally got to see that and other stuff, which I thought was great. And that was that. Was that. And then just, you know, everything just exploded from there because there was a lot of stuff released since then. Because, you know we were getting closer to the release date and people were like every time they released something for the remake everyone was like okay can we play the demo because they would let people play the demo at like conventions they were at or events they were at but they wouldn't they had not released it publicly yet so people kept going okay where's the demo where's the demo and then earlier this year the game got delayed from March 3rd to April 10th and some people were furious about that. Others were like, well, this is only because they want to make sure it's perfect. They don't want to release a game that's buggy or flawed. And I I looked at the logical part of it and thought, okay, well, if they need this delay, they need this delay. Like, you don't want to play a game that's not perfect and rush it. Then wait for it for a perfect game to come out. Which I think is a good idea, because, you know, what if so many people pushed them to release it on the original date, and they did, and it was, like, buggy, it wasn't perfect, it had flaws, people would start complaining. And then you'd be like, well, they were going to delay it, but you wanted them to release it on the original date, which was not going to work, because they need to finish this game, they need to fix it up so it's good for everyone to play, you know, and I was okay with that. So then people kept asking, okay, can we have the demo, blah, blah, blah. The original release date came, March 3rd, and they surprised everyone by releasing the demo for everyone to play on PlayStation 4. So everyone was finally excited to play the demo and everything. And then as soon as I got my PS4, I played the demo and I thought it was amazing and I love it so much and I was like I can't wait for this game now and so that happened and everyone got the demo they were all happy and we were able we were able to hold over until the release date which is coming in 20 hours so and then they released a final trailer blah 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 all that happened and now we're here so that wasn't really like, that wasn't, I mean, that was kind of my journey to being excited for it as opposed to everyone 
or just the journey of Final Fantasy 7 Remake, but I felt like I should talk about everyone's journey so that it's more like we're connected with this game. We're, we're all waiting for it together, except those who got it already, but, you know, we're all ready to play this game. We're all ready to go back to Midgar. We're all ready to meet our favorite characters again, and I'm just, I'm so beyond ready. And I'm really glad to have Cloud back. I'm really glad. So, I guess that's it for this video. And I will see you guys at probably whatever I upload next. I probably am going to go ahead and do a series where I talk about the remake with my impressions of it, you know, from when I play it and, you know, after I'm done playing a certain amount, I will probably do a video talking about my impressions of it and my favorite moments, etc, etc. And I will warn you guys that could contain spoilers. So if you want to wait and like save those videos of mine for later, you can. They'll be up for you guys to watch later whenever. Just, it's okay if you don't want to watch those right away. So, you know, it's it's all up to you. And anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this game as much as I hope I do. And we're almost there. So, take care guys.